The Bangladeshi whose island home is underwater is not thinking about Copenhagen and if it will reverse his loss. The family in Muradabad, the wage earner who has malaria and a child who is crippled with polio is not thinking if it could become even worse. Climate change is here. It is here and now. I was thrilled when I went to the presidential inaugural and I heard our President Obama quote Martin Luther King when he spoke of the fierce urgency of now. The fierce urgency of now. We cannot wait, we cannot pause, we cannot delay. So in this atmosphere of the fierce urgency of now, I want to spend my six minutes talking about the likelihood that climate change will create for us new pandemics, emerging communicable diseases, in a scale, variety, and method perhaps unprecedented in the history of the world. And to stop some of these pandemics, we have only a very narrow window of time. Let me talk about just a few. First, 30 years ago here at this hotel, not very far from this room, the then Minister of Health, Karan Singh, presented a statue of Shiva Nataraj, very similar to the one that you see as you walk into this convention center, and he presented it to the World Health Organization on behalf of a grateful India for the help of WHO in eradicating smallpox, a disease which in that century killed one half of a billion people. The campaign to eradicate smallpox cost $150 million. It had 150,000 people working on it. And those lives were saved and those resources are now available to deal with other health issues. And it's a good thing because in today's financial and climate environment, I don't know if we could eradicate smallpox today. And at the same time today, we're fighting against another disease. We're trying to eradicate polio. The polio eradication program began with such great promise in 1988. Within 10 years, we had conquered 99% of all the polio in the world. But now the program is in its final inch. But it is as a risk of stalling. Even though last year there were only 1,500 cases of polio in the world, down from hundreds of thousands and millions previously, still we are at risk of losing steam. Half the cases are in Nigeria, one third are in India, and there are only four countries that are still endemic, if you include Pakistan and Afghanistan. But my friends, if the temperatures rise one degree centigrade, if the sea levels rise yet a few meters, we will have climate refugees, and polio and other waterborne diseases will leap out of the pages of history onto the front pages of your home newspaper. And eradicating polio is part of the fierce urgency of now. This is not passive adaptation. I'm sad that it has taken more than $6 billion to get to the last handful of cases but now the army of four million people working in India must be supported and we must eradicate polio because if we don't, we will never be ready for the next disease soon to come, malaria. I'm proud to tell you that uh, Google has created a, uh, a movie called The Final Inch, which has just been uh, nominated for an Oscar. It is about the polio workers in Uttar Pradesh, along with the slumdog millionaire India might be lucky and get two Oscars this year. But we can't lose the battle against polio because we will not be equipped then to deal with malaria, which kills over one million children a year in Africa alone. In fact, it is estimated and maybe Jeff can comment on this, that six out of the eight Millennium Development Goals can only be reached 
with effective malaria control. Two days ago at the TED conference in Long Beach, California, Bill Gates, whose foundation has pledged over $1 billion to eradicate malaria, took a stage like this, spoke to the leaders of the technology world who didn't know what malaria was. He opened up a sack and he released uh, thousands of Anopheles mosquitoes into the room to bring home the point that malaria is part of the fierce urgency of now. And I will tell you that if the midpoint of the IPCC estimates are reached in 10 years, we will see malaria in the south of France and in Hollywood. And perhaps malaria in Cannes at the festival and in Hollywood will be the equivalent of Bill Gates releasing mosquitoes at the TED conference. It will help focus our mind on the fierce urgency of now. And the last thing that I want to tell you is that smallpox, polio, malaria, they're just the beginning. There are 30 new emerging communicable diseases that are linked to climate change that are yet to besiege us. A litany of diseases, bird flu, SARS, Ebola, Lassa fever, chikungunya, Rift Valley, West Nile, Marburg. Last year, Africans searching for food consumed over 700 million wild animals, 2 billion kilograms of bushmeat. This animal-human intimacy has brought us to the verge of an explosion of zoonotic diseases. If one of these new viruses jumps species and goes human to human, how many millions of us will die? There will be no airplanes in the sky. Would you get on the plane with 200 strangers if you knew that there was bird flu that killed 10% of the people in the environment? Six weeks ago, a colleague uh, at Columbia, Ian Lipkin, isolated a brand new disease, a brand new virus, never seen before, a virus that jumped from a small rodent to humans, initially spread by blood, but now on the verge of becoming spread by air. It's called an arena virus, named because in Greek, arena means sand, and the little virus particles under a microscope look like sand. This is a perfect pathogen waiting for the right climate. I tell you, we cannot sit back and adapt while the pathogens are changing. We don't want to adapt to a world with these kinds of pandemics on the verge of hitting us. We want prevention, preparedness, intelligence, resiliency. We want early warning and early response. We must understand this narrow window of time that is the fierce urgency of now. 10,000 possible new pandemics released from Pandora's box. My friends, we see this coming like we watched Katrina inexorably moving towards the United States. We can see this disaster and another coming. And if this happens, what will happen to the rest of the world that we live in? How many will die? Let us not fail to honor the fierce urgency of now while there's still time, and let us do it before we have to explain to our children and our grandchildren how it, become, how it became the epidemic tragedy of then that we missed. Thank you very much.